friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido. And on this week's episode, you may have some preconceived notions as to what you think Nebraska looks like, but we promise we are going to dispel all of those here in the Nebraska National Forest. So stay tuned. Now we're here boondocking on Nebraska National Forest, Forest Road 714A, about eight miles south of the town of Chadron. Uh, we are directly above Chadron State Park. Now, when we arrived here, the campground was still closed for COVID-19. It has now reopened as of yesterday, or actually two days ago, excuse me. And we've realized that folks really don't boondock up here. It is completely legal. Uh, we verified that via the motor vehicle use map that's put out by the National Forest. However, you know, the campground down below is book solid, but there's nobody, and I mean nobody else camping up here. It's a beautiful spot. We're on a ridge top about 700 feet above the plains below uh, as they lead north, and you can see all the way to the Black Hills of South Dakota from up here. Um, we even had a local farmer, the neighbor, uh, right off the National Forest Service land, stop by afraid that we were gonna get a ticket for illegal camping because he's never seen anybody camp up here. <laughs> it just blows my mind uh, because it is just too beautiful. Now, on this episode, we're gonna explore all kinds of neat things around the area. We're gonna go see some really unique geological formations in Toadstool Geologic Park. We're going to take a look at Fort Robinson, uh, a historic site run as a state park not too many miles away from here. And we're also going to check out one of the most unique art installations you've ever seen. Now this area owes its history originally to fur trappers along the river here. And so we're going to look into that history while we're here as well. Uh, in the meantime though, let's show you around camp a little bit.
If you're not a boondocker, Shadron State Park, just down the hill from our camp, has a marvelous campground and even 22 quaint cabins furnished with bedding, towels, stoves, refrigerator, and cooking utensils. The campground features 69 electrical sites for RV travelers with any size rig. The 973 acre state park itself is positively beautiful and was Nebraska's first, founded in 1921. Visitors will find six miles of hiking and mountain biking trails, a swimming pool, fishing pond, paddle boat rentals, an archery range, tennis and sand volleyball courts, horseshoe pits, ball fields and playgrounds, a disc golf course, and a trading post. Plenty to do. The first Europeans to arrive in northwestern Nebraska were fur traders. America's first multimillionaire, John Jacob Astor, made his fortune by establishing a monopoly on the fur trade. Establishing the American Fur Company in 1808, Astor financed overland expeditions to reach his trading post at Fort Astoria in Oregon, the first U.S. community on the Pacific Coast, paving the way for settlers who would later travel this way along the Mormon, Oregon, and California trails. The excellent Museum of the Fur Trade, three miles east of Shadron, tells this story. All items in the museum's collection are original pieces and include the oldest known point blanket from 1775, firearms that were owned by Kit Carson and Tecumseh, and crop seeds that were obtained directly from American Indians over 125 years ago. The Museum of the Fur Trade sits on the site of James Bordeaux's trading post, which was established for the American Fur Company in 1837 and is now included in the National Register of Historic Places.
Later, it was the railroad that brought settlers to Chadron. The town is named for Louis Chartrand, a French Indian fur trapper who ran a trading post on Chadron Creek in 1841. But it wasn't until 1884 that the town was formally established when the Fremont, Elkhorn, and Missouri Valley Railroad was constructed through the area from Omaha, Nebraska on its way to Wyoming. Chadron was first settled at the confluence of the White River and Chadron Creek, where the railroad was expected to branch. When it was built six miles away on Bordeaux Creek, the townspeople packed up the entire town, buildings included, and moved it to the new location. Among the town's founders was businessman Charles Henry King, who established retail and freight businesses and banks in towns along the railroad's route. In 1913, King became the grandfather of the future president, Gerald Ford. A few miles west of Shadron, near the town of Crawford, Fort Robinson is a former U.S. Army fort and now a part of the 22,000-acre Fort Robinson State Park. The fort was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1960 and is included in an historic district with the second site of the Red Cloud Agency, which would later become the Pine Ridge Reservation in nearby South Dakota. Some 13,000 Lakota have been resettled at the agency some of them hostile, as there were continuing tensions on the Great Plains between whites and the Lakota, who had been forced off much of their territory. Fort Robinson was a base of U.S. military forces and played a major role in the Sioux Wars from 1876 to 1890. The war chief Crazy Horse surrendered here with his band in May of 1877, and in September of that year he was fatally wounded while resisting imprisonment. In 1885, the all-black 9th Cavalry Regiment, nicknamed the Buffalo Soldiers by Native Americans, was stationed at Fort Robinson. Later during World War II, the fort was used to hold a German prisoner of war camp. The U.S. Army decided to abandon Fort Robinson in 1947 and is now operated by the Nebraska Game, Forestation, and Parks Commission as a Nebraska State Park. Fort Robinson State Park's Shady Campground offers 81 electrical sites and 34 full hookup sites, plus six primitive sites, with modern restrooms and showers, water, a dump station, picnic tables, and a shelter. Fort Robinson also offers a nice campground for horse lovers, who can put their horse up for the night in one of the newly remodeled horse barns. Toadstool Geologic Park is located in the Ogallala National Grassland, west of Chadron. Known as the Badlands of Nebraska, there is a one-mile interpretive loop trail lined by many fossils of large prehistoric animals among the unique geological formations.
we're going to travel south from our camp for about 45 miles to visit a unique piece of roadside Americana just north of the Nebraska town of Alliance. A replica of England's Stonehenge, but formed from vintage American automobiles instead of giant standing stones. Carhenge was built by Alliance resident Jim Reinders and was dedicated at the June 1987 summer solstice. Reinders donated the 10-acre site to the Friends of Carhenge, and in 2013, the Friends of Carhenge donated the site to the Citizens of Alliance. Now just a little programming note for our regular viewers, this summer is going to seem a little bit unusual to you, probably about as unusual as it seems to us. You folks are used to us boondocking as often as possible on public land, kind of like what we're doing right now. However, this summer, out of necessity, we're going to be primarily in RV parks and campgrounds. We actually have a plan and we actually have reservations totally foreign concept to us. Uh, that's because we're heading east. And once you get east of here, uh, opportunities for boondocking on public land are precious few and far between. So out of necessity, we're going to be staying in campgrounds. We're calling this the American Heartland Tour 2020 for Grand Adventure. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, now is the perfect time go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the corner and ring that notification bell so you can come along with us on the American Heartland Tour of 2020. If you like this video please give us a big thumbs up down below where you'll also find the comment section where we'd love to hear from you after each and every episode and we would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, 
and on social media. We really hope you enjoyed exploring this section of the Nebraska Panhandle with us. Coming up next week, we will be in South Dakota. So we look forward to seeing you then. And until then, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.